this if I actually start the stream. down here just for a second. over there. All right. So we're not start we're not starting as early as I wanted to. But we are getting going a little early. We're still early. Okay. Sorry, my eyes have been terribly itchy and gritty and all that happy shit today. Goody allergies. Alright, so for those that don't know, we are attempting to recreate a Bob Ross painting with tissue paper. Because why not? You know, why the hell not? Um, I've done a few of these tissue paper um, art projects this way. Um, it's just something I like to do. It is a bit labor intensive, um, but at the same time I really like how the end result looks. Um, it has sort of this embroidered look to it, but it's paper, so I, I love that. Um, so I figured, let's try to redo a Bob Ross painting in tissue paper. Um, I painted this one last summer, I think. Um, we did a tutorial, we followed a, a tutorial, we did it on the channel. It is a magnet that is still currently available on the Etsy store. So let's uh, let's hop in and let's get started. And um, don't know how far we're gonna get today, but we're gonna try to make a little bit of headway here. I've got a little bit of um, got a small small fair amount of um, paper pre-twisted so hopefully we won't run out of pre-twisted stuff because twisting it does take a little bit of time. Not a you know earth shattering amount of time but you know it is time that we could be using to to uh, put stuff down so you know and of course my incense went out I had a feeling that wasn't lit right Rinsing my glue brush here. Okay, grab my scissors just in case we need them. Let's see if we can get the incense lit again without setting my one plate on fire. A little close there. It singed the edge of it. There's some soot on there. Should be alright. 
Okay. So we're going to start with um, finishing up the super light pink in the sky. I have Ziploc bags everywhere with all of these different shades that I have twisted and cut and all of that. And yes, I want to finish up the light pink. I am still working on a desert scene that I'm doing a video with. Um, I only have a couple of days a week that I can work on that one though. Um, cause I'm working around, uh, time that I need to prep for, for our bloodthirsty streams. Cause those do take some prep time. Believe it or not. And I didn't actually get any prep time done on that today yet. Unfortunately. And I don't know if I'm going to. Um, it's supposed to storm later, and they're kind of concerned about one line of storms coming in. Um, but it looks like they're thinking it'll probably just be straight line winds will be an issue with those. But I still try not to touch the bloodthirsties when um, when there's a storm, when it's thundering. Rain I'm fine with, um, but you never know if the power is going to suddenly give out. You alright? Yeah, just uh, drowning in snot because I can't breathe the windows. and. Uh drink water. Mm. You're having a me moment. Yeah. Alright. Turns out mother in law is not coming back today. She's going to be coming back tomorrow now it looks like. Maybe. And then after that her and her one sister are supposedly going up to New Hampshire. We'll see. So cut that guy. He is a little, a little big to fit the space I was trying to shove him. We didn't go for a super, a super multicolored one um, to start off with. If this one comes out all right, we might try to do another Bob Ross recreates. Um, I think the next one that we do with this will probably end up being something from my brain. Most likely. Just so, you know, it can be shown that we can do more than just following something somebody else did. Just thought this would be a nice jumping off point to warm up getting back into this. 
and um, I wanted to see if we could do it because his stuff can be a little bit more complicated, right? Like, like with paint it's not so bad, but he does a lot of color layering. So I was curious to see if, um, sorry, uh, something is like making a creaky noise. I think it's my earbuds rubbing on the desk as I'm leaning forward. Um, it was very distracting. I wanted to see if this could be done because he does do a lot of color layering, like, you know, dark and then light on top of the dark and then, you know, some more dark on top of that. So this is a little bit, like you can't blend this, so not really, um, so I wanted to see what we can do, or what I can do, the royal we, I wanted to see if I could pull it off. And so far, I am liking what I'm seeing. And I know we haven't gotten very far, but you know, I think it is a process. It's not a fast process. Um, but I am liking where we're going so far. This is our darker pink that I'm switching over to now. And I've got some some of our different purple shades so that we can work on our cloudy things. Well, we will see how this goes. But so far, I'm definitely encouraged. So, I mean, sometimes you'll be working on a project and it's just like, oof, I don't know about this. It's like, no, no, we'll keep going. Let's not give up on it yet, but so far I haven't really had that feeling. And you don't have to do a color key. You can just wing it. Um, for me, I like having the color key down, so if, um, you know, for the times that, if it's not a project I know I'm going to finish in like two days, I want to have that down so I don't forget what I was doing, number one. Number two, it's also helpful in case there are gaps between the colors between the, the paper strands um, so that way you don't have the white of the canvas. Wow, that was a loud truck. Sorry, I have the window open and it's warm in here. Traffic and all that. Um, but uh, yeah, so you don't have like these bright white patches of canvas or 
whatever your bottom surface is, wood or what have you, poking through and staring at you, being like, hey, you missed a spot. I mean, sometimes I see the spots I missed anyway, but I will go back in, usually, and uh, fill them in if it's a big enough gap. Sometimes you'll get a little bit of seepage from the color underneath where it squished the glue up. That's fine. It'll dry. It will dry. The tacky glue dries clear. For the most part. Might be a tiny little bit of cloud to it. But it's not like it's going to dry white. So we can, uh, we can work with that. That's fine. Not a huge deal. So today's goal is to try to get some of some more of this pink filled in and then to try to start doing our purple. Clouds in. So we'll see how far we get today. <coughs> That's why I wanted to start a little bit early. Just to see if we can get a little bit further today. So how's everybody's Friday shaping up. If it's Friday for you, if it's not, what day is it for you? If it's Saturday, what you doing for the weekend? Anything, nothing? I'll be at home, but I will be busy. I'll be working on getting the remaining, the remaining bloodthirsties ready for next week. Oh, we might not be doing bloodthirsty next Wednesday. We might be doing it a different day. We might be doing it on Thursday instead and switching Iron Man to Wednesday. It depends. Um, it looks like there might be some thunderstorms next Wednesday. Kind of depends on how things are shaping up closer to the day and what I decide to do. Um, I don't think I have time to get them ready, get everybody ready um, for Monday. So, and we can't go on Tuesday because that's the husband's D&D &D day. If we did go on Tuesday, it would have to be way, way early. Which wouldn't be that much of a problem, but... We'll see how what things look like when we get closer. To next week.
because the forecast could change by then anyhow as it often does around here at least I hope all of this freezing nonsense is done I don't my hummingbird flowers may have survived they, they don't look too bad right now so um, hopefully that's one thing I'm still nervous about my elephant ears because they have not sprouted yet so I don't know if they're going to I'm a bit nervous about them still. They took the blanket and the plastic off of their buckets and apparently some sunflower seeds had somehow gotten into their buckets. I'm not even sure how. I don't know if the birds dropped them in there. I don't know if the wind blew them from where they were located for uh, the birds. I, I just, I don't know. But um, there's some flowers sprouting up out of them when we took the plastic off. We're like, uh, okay. It's like, why are you here? I did not purposely put you here. that glue too dry now? Could be. Well, the good thing about how I do this is that if there are any loose ends sticking up, when I go back to seal it, it gets sealed with um, Mod Podge, so it'll get all down in the crevices and it'll make sure that everybody is well and truly secured at that point. Oh, here it is. I think we are ready for some more glue. Okay. Let's see, where do we want to go with the next set of glue? I mean, I guess we could finish taking this up in this direction. lid back on the glue bottle and we'll grab our brush just to kind of smooth this out why is it that even when I stream early my neighbor comes out and starts his truck why I swear that's okay, I was a little delayed in getting going because somebody was at the car wash a couple doors down blaring their radio and I was like, really watch my microphone, pick it up because you could hear it inside the house and with the window open and I was like, great. So I was kind of stalling waiting for them to leave. That's why we got started a few minutes after I said we were going live, I was like, oh shit. Like, that's not cool. I will say, for the first time today, I saw a vehicle out and about that had their YouTube channel name on the side of the vehicle, and I was like, what? <laughs> like okay I have no idea what it was for 
I haven't had the chance to look it up yet. I was going to, and then I forgot. And just found it a little surprising. I mean, okay, cool. It's free advertising, that's for sure. Just kind of took me by surprise. I was not expecting to see that. And I don't know if it's like a personal YouTube channel or if it's like a business. I don't know. I have to remember to look that up later because I am super curious now. I mean, it's not a bad idea. I mean, people put their business logos and stuff on their vehicles. Lots of dump trucks going by today. Which is a little surprising. I'm not sure why they're going by. Because it kind of feels like they could just stay on the bypass. Like, I don't know where they're coming from. So today we are back on um, El City. I didn't really have any instrumental stuff that I wanted to listen to today. Oh, you guys can't hear it because I'm not getting my ass in trouble. So sorry for the lack of music, but hey, you know what? Go ahead and put your own music on because then you know you're going to like it. And then, you know, you can have that on quieter in the background. And then everybody's happy. I do miss Pretzel, though. Pretzel had some, some nice stuff on it. I mean, I probably could still have it playing, but I didn't feel like fussing with it right now. Um, and I could just like mute my my desktop audio so it wouldn't be an issue. Alright. So we've reached the upper cloud section in one spot at least. vehicles welcome to the south everybody is just e peening over each other between their ATVs their four-wheelers the stuff with the roll cages on it The trucks on the jacked up suspensions, chassis, whatever the fuck it is. I'm not a car person. You guys know what I'm talking about. So it's okay in here. If um, if we don't hit the cloud line um, right up to where the paint is, because I can just stick the 
some extra purple on there and that's fine. Not a big deal. So like that gap in there, I'm not going to stress that. more paper sticks. I love the sound that these paper doodles make. Love it. They're probably crazy because I like the sound that it makes, but when they're all twisted and you've got a pile of them, it's just the sound that they make. Um, like pinging off of each other as you pick them up. Bless you. <coughs> Bless you. Husband sneeze. I tried so hard not to actually sneeze to that side of her face. It's gonna happen. He sneezed earlier and had like an automatic nosebleed. He's turning into me. It's been very dry though. I had to start doing the Vaseline again to uh, keep my nose from bleeding because I've got a vein on the one side that does not like to behave and will occasionally um, crack open and has done so ever since I was little. is another reason reason why I try not to do Benadryl too much because when I do take some Benadryl not only does it fuck me up um, sleepiness wise even if I take the non drowsy I've tried and we're talking children's doses too so it just knocks me on my ass um, but it seems like I've noticed whenever I start taking it um, when I do have a nosebleed, it tends to be a little more robust. So allergy season has just been hell this year. I really liked the um, uh, the Vix nose spray. Um, I forget what it was called. Like the Dayquil nose spray or something equivalent. But I was becoming dependent on it to the point where I was like needing to use it like every hour. And I was like, oh, this isn't good. This is like supposed to be a four hour spray. So I had to stop using that. Which sucked, but it's like, oh no, no, no. And there's actually warnings on that, you know, can become habit forming, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, oh. Well, you're not wrong. Definitely not wrong about that. So it was best that we stopped using that when we did before things got further out of hand. Somebody on our town Facebook page said that they are building something that looks like an old tiny like western saloon or something near nearby and nobody really knows what it fully is it's on someone's private property though which is kind of bizarre so 
lot of people are curious. I actually want to try to take a drive out the way and see if we can find where they're talking about. So we're making some, some good progress here. Sorry, sometimes I have to try to wipe the excess glue off the end of my stylus. So if you see me like going like this, that's what that's about. Just to keep that from getting built up too much. You do get this, the glue little pieces seeping up. It's gonna happen. And that's okay when that happens. Okay. That looks pretty good so far. All right, now. I probably twisted way more pink than we needed, but I, wasn't I was unsure how much we were gonna need. And it's not like it's gonna be Wasted. It will be saved for either the other project that I am working on. Because I will need some pink for that. Or it will be kept for another project. Because it's not often that I do a lot of untwisted paper. It'll either be straight lines twisted or our little circle do's. our glue out here. And make sure we rinse that brush off of there. Or rinse the glue off the brush, rather. Alright. Okay, I'm going to give that a chance to... Oh, got filled a little bit for... Sorry, my camera's sitting on top of my monitor and I pushed on my desk. I'm going to give that just a moment to set up and I will be right back in just one moment um, we need to change that text color though okay oh, we'll put that over here All right, I will be right back one minute
about that. I wish that camera wasn't so bouncy when I sit down and move around, but uh, it is what it is. Okay. And we'll start dropping these guys back in. And don't be afraid to cut your, your paper twists to fit where you need it to go. Well, that's fine. Better to cut it to fit it than have a weird, awkward gap. But you didn't really need to have in there. Sometimes you kind of have to squish it in there with your finger too, if it's being a little unruly. You know what, if you've got one piece that sits a little higher than the other, so what? I'm actually going to come back in and do another layer on some of the cloud section there, so if I have a couple little gaps up against that, I'm not gonna fuss with that too much, that's okay. It'll be all right. Not a huge deal. So we also, also got a little bit of a late start because we ran to the store real quick. Um, husband was up to going, so we take advantage of those opportunities. And then when we came back, we were like, oh shit, we didn't get X, Y, or Z. And what he was originally going to do for lunch didn't quite pan out so we needed to go and get some flour so he could make his biscuits and gravy Gonna try to get that filled in there. We probably could have just worked some. Oh, uh, some purple into there, but that's okay. We still might end up working some purple into there.
We'll see. This one's kind of sharp point. So just kind of lay that down in there. And, you know, this stuff doesn't have to be 100% flat. It can be, you know, layered on top of each other. It's fine. Unless you don't want it to look that way, but that's going to come down to your personal preference, I suppose. little tiny piece in there it's just being a little unruly so I'm sliding everything all over the table today good job it's one of those days I think I got used to the bigger canvas but uh, the other project is on the other project is on a much larger canvas um, it's 12 by something I don't remember what it is I want to say it's like 12 by 16 12 by 18 it's a size I don't normally use But that video, even though it's going to be a speed paint video, it is going to be a longer speed paint because just of the size of it. So that one's going to take a bit of time to edit together. But that's okay. Um, I don't think I'll have too much to cut out in between. I've been trying to pause in sections that didn't matter. Like me stopping to twist paper. <laughs> Not like a live stream. I mean, I could go back and turn the live streams into speed paint videos, but those are a little bit more of a pain in the ass. Because there are times where I have to stop and we don't always finish on the live streams. So I'm just getting the glue off my fingers. So it doesn't build up too badly. look swollen. I mean, I know my fingers are, but like my wrist looks swollen. Though the weather has not been kind, so I'm not totally surprised. Like I said, it's supposed to rain this afternoon, tonight. Um, they're talking about a line of storms setting up sometime after midnight. That they're like, oh yeah, there could be straight line winds in with that. Sorry, this keeps sliding. I'm trying not to let it slide too much. So, um, at least it's straight line winds and not tornadoes. That's fine. I mean, straight line winds can be can be no joke to deal with either, but they're not as 
emergency inducing as um in a tornado situation. Like you still have to be smart, you still shouldn't be out in it. But um, we won't have to go hide in the bathroom during that though. We looked into getting a storm shelter. Uh, we don't have the money for that. Um, they're very expensive. Surprisingly. Very, very expensive for the size shelter. We would need, it was like $5,000 minimum. And I think that was just for the shelter. I don't think that included um, the installation labor, I think. I could be wrong about that. So yeah, they're not they're not cheap things, but then again, you know, you do get what you pay for, so I guess you don't really want them to be cheap, but kind of surprised they don't have like rebate programs or free grant programs with that. Like they do um, with like solar panels and stuff. Maybe they do and I just don't know about it. I haven't seen it though. And even then you still might have to do something out of pocket and we just don't have it right now. All right, so let's get some more glue down. A ginormous bottle of tacky glue. This is the 16 ounce bottle. You don't have to use the bottle this big. This is what I had. And I was buying in bulk because it was a little bit cheaper. For the amount that I was going to need. So I think we'll just glue this whole section up in here. Lid back on so I don't lose the lid. I almost lost the lid one day last week. I almost lost it on my desk of all places. I was like, where did it go? It was right here. It had rolled under something. So I've been trying to do a little bit of leveling on the warlock throughout the week as I'm working on the others so I have less to do in one sitting. I feel bad that I didn't get any of that done yet today. Oh. Ah, now I got glue all over my fingers. Little glue. Little glue peelies. Alright, might as well Get that little 
section up in there while we're at it. And rinse the glue out of the brush. So I hopefully don't have to destroy another brush for glue. We don't want to do that. I prefer to paint with my brushes, not destroy them unnecessarily. Alright, let's start with not dropping the things. Right. And haven't done the bark yet for the tree. We'll get there. We also have to do the leaves for our tree. I didn't forget. Leaves are going to be one of the last things done. Cow, behave. That cow. Cow, leave it be. He's not bothering anyone. He's just trying to take a nap. So, I mean that's okay that we've overlapped a bit. We can we can handle that. Not a big deal. So, just gonna keep, keep it going. And I know we're focusing a lot on one color at the moment, but you know it's gonna happen. We'll be jumping to another color soon. We'll be jumping into the lighter purple that I had just did the wrong color for it first. Oh, I have to sneeze. Maybe, maybe not. Ah, finger in the glue. Finger in the glue, finger in the glue. What you gonna do, finger in the glue. All right. that tapped in. As long as we don't put the finger in the glue too often. I mean, we do want the glue to stay on the canvas. To grab our... Hey! That's Ow. enough! <clears throat> Ed's trying to sleep. Knock that off. He's trying to hump Ed. He's the runt of his litter, cow. So I feel like he has a chip on his shoulder constantly where he has to assert his dominance on everyone and everyone else is like, what are you doing? And they just look at him like he's just the most ridiculous thing ever. And later today, Ed'll be just pinning him to the floor and be like what were you saying earlier? Oh, stop putting your hand in the glue. Never. Never. Why would I do that? We'll forever have our hand in that glue. At least it's just tacky glue. <laughs> so it's gonna come off. It's not like it's super glue where we have to be worried. Alright. So next month I'm going to try to get a different lotion 
for my hands. Because the stuff I have now to try to help with this eczema or whatever it is on my fingers um, just doesn't really feel like it's helping at all. So um, I might try the O'Keefe stuff if it doesn't have a scent. I didn't get to really look too hard into it today. I did notice that the one store we were at had it, but I didn't get the chance to see if it was scented. Because the scents aren't always a good thing. Some scents are okay. More often than not, they're a problem. Which makes for frustrating times. And you never really stop and think about how much stuff has fragrance in it until you're one of those people that is triggered by fragrances in stuff like laundry detergent like dryer sheets like cleaning supplies ha shampoo hairspray lotion um you know it's not just the candles and things that you know have since it's even other stuff hand sanitizer has been a big problem for me um, this whole time because people keep making it with these effing weird ass fragrances in it and I'm like why like can't we just leave it at the alcohol scent why, why do we have to make it smell different like I'd rather have it have the alcohol scent because, you know, the, the alcohol scent doesn't bother me. It's like, fine, whatever, this is how it is. And one of the ones that we had been using, they changed the scent on it and I was like, oh, you bastards. It's like, why? Like, some of this stuff does not need to have a scent to it. You don't need to scent the hand sanitizer, okay? Because most people, after they use hand sanitizer, are in the hand lotion because the hand sanitizer from the alcohol in it is drying their hands out. So then you've got scents battling scents. Like, going to the mall is a trial and a half for me, because since, <laughs> you know, it's like, oh god, I just walked into a cloud of perfume. Was it coming from that store or the lady in front of me? I used to love Bad Bath & Beyond. Not Bed Bath & Beyond, Bath & Body Works. There we go. I get them mixed up. Like, I know the store, but I get the names swapped, excuse me. Um, I used to love Bath and Body Works. And I used to use some stuff from there. The one scent that I could use without issue, um, they changed it into a seasonal scent. And I guess when it first came out, they were just testing to see how popular, popular it was. And then they got put on a, the seasonal where it only came out um, 
like every six months. It came out in June, I think, in January or something. And, um, and then they changed the formula on it. And the new formula didn't work for me. Like, I was willing to risk the migraine to go in there to get it. Because the, the scent of that particular um, shower gel and lotion didn't upset me. It didn't give me a migraine. And then they changed it. Uh-oh. Where'd it go? <laughs> Had one escape. Um, it's terrible. I cannot even walk past the outside of the stores now. Like, it, if it's a mall location and they don't have a closed door on it. Oh, buddy. The, <laughs> the scent wafting from that place, for me, is just almost an instant migraine. It's terrible. So I don't even, well number one the mall's too peopley. It's just one of those things I don't like doing very often unless I know it's gonna be slow or that particular mall isn't that busy. Or we go at a time where it, we know it's not gonna be that busy but if you remove the the large amount of people factor the this the perfume clouds from people like I'm like do they not realize how much perfume do they have on or they have on cuz oh my god I swear some people dump like two-thirds of the bottle on themselves and I'm like no no You've become nose blind to it. You have way too much perfume on. Or I'm just extra sensitive. And it's a lot of times it's most likely me. But you do not need that much perfume on. And it just kills me. I'm like, oh god. I'm like, no, no, we have to hurry. <laughs> I spent half the time holding my breath the few times we've been. I don't even remember the last time we were in the mall. When the hell was the last time we were in the mall? Um. Shit. I want to say almost two years ago. Like, I don't even remember what the hell we were looking for. Really don't. That's how long it's been. Yeah, I have no clue. Unless we just went to take a walk. Maybe we were just window shopping. But there's not that many stores um, in the mall that we have near us. There's like another larger mall shopping center that's um, maybe 45 minutes from us. We were there once. Um, I think. Or maybe we were supposed to go and something happened and we didn't end up going. Because I thought Russell's friend Um, I was gonna take us to eat there. Where? P 
TF Chang's up in Promenade? But for some reason, I don't remember us actually eating there. I remember us going up there. Maybe we just went to the movies. Uh, no, we did end up eating there. Did we? Yeah. I don't remember actually eating. I remember going up there. I remember... I don't think you're, you were particularly confused about the food. Yeah, I mean, P.F. Chang's is okay. I just, I don't particularly care for their seasoning palette. I've had better Chinese elsewhere, to be perfectly honest. In my opinion. But then again, I miss my local mom and pop um, Chinese restaurant. That was just a bit of a gap that I'm filling in there. So sometimes I will go back in and fill in. So I mean, there there is another mall up there, although I don't know if it's a strip mall or if it's a like a shopping center or a mall mall. That I do not recall. All right, so we've almost got our sky filled in, almost. Not looking too bad. We just have a little bit more um, pink to go in here. Oop. Sorry, I was trying to look at something and forgot I had Oh, I lost a couple. No, I lost one to the floor. That's okay. It's alright, we have plenty. Alright, we're gonna work on this section in here. And then we'll start in on our purple. We've got a lot of purple. We might smush some of the trees in, in here depending on if I get tired of looking at the purple or not. We'll see. Oh wow, we've been going for on that sky. It took us an hour to finish that section of the sky. So you can really lose some time on this project. So maybe I should have gone a little bit smaller, but eh, I didn't really want to go that small. This feels like a good size for this. The 16 by 20s are a little big and they do take a while to get through. but eight by 10 feels a little small. So I think this, this might be a good size. This is an 11 by 14. Okay, just cleaning off our brush. Making sure we don't let any glue dry in there. I probably need to get some fresh water in that cup soon because it's just gonna there's gonna be more glue than water in there soon all right so this section we're gonna need to definitely cut some pieces for just because of the size of our section here. Oh, that one's gonna be a little bit fussy, isn't it? That's all right. We'll figure it out. It's 
sorry, just getting the glue build up off of the my little stick here. to trim that down a little bit. So as the glue seeps into the paper, because it's tissue paper, right? Um, some sections will get a little bit soggy, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, it'll let you um, manipulate it a little bit easier if you're having a section that's being a little bit stubborn about fitting where you want it to be. So don't get too frustrated and it won't stay soggy. It'll harden up as it dries. So don't get too discouraged. Like I said before, it's going to take a little bit of trial and error if you attempt to do these, just to get a feel for how the supplies behave and what you can get away with doing. That one laid up in there. Okay. I'm gonna cut this one just a little. I'm going to lay that one in there. And I'm also um, pressing down on these too. I'm not just kind of sinking it. I know it's a little hard to tell. But that's where my stick comes in. I am pushing this down into the glue and pushing it against the other ones that are there just to try to tighten up any gaps that might be trying to form. So don't be afraid to play with it. Like sometimes you just need to get in there. And see what it can do, right? So. It's okay, it's just paper. It's not gonna bite. It's just paper and tacky glue. It's gonna be okay. Alright, so we're almost done with our base sky and then we'll be moving on to our 
clouds, but getting back into them. If you don't like the size that you've trimmed to, trim a different piece. Save what you trimmed for maybe another spot somewhere, but... I don't know. <laughs> Come on. Get in there. Smush them all down into the glue. All right. So we still have pink that we need to do in the water section down below, which you can't see at the moment. We haven't really touched anything down that way yet, but that's okay. One thing at a time. We could work on that, but let's let's stay up top for right now. And let's work on some of our purple. Now I know I don't have anywhere near enough purple done and ready. That's okay. We will work with what we've got. need a little piece of paper towel to wipe off the top of our glue nozzle there. Okay. Got a glue bubble there. Alright. My shaky ass hands. Okay, I'm gonna squeeze the bottle of glue. Okay. So I'm just gonna. You don't have to spread it out with a brush. You could use a toothpick, um, a q tip that you've defuzzed. You wanna defuzz the q tip though, if you're gonna try to, to use that. Maybe just clip the fuzzy section off the end. Just use the stick or like a tiny piece of craft stick or like a paper clip I just bend one of the little arms out I'm just using this brush because it's one of my sealing brushes so it's kind of messed up anyhow all right so now we're gonna make the snail shells or the little flower buds that we did, we're just gonna roll the little paper, guys. Now, usually, usually the first one down will be a little uncooperative. And I may have rolled my paper a little tight. There we go. So sometimes it helps if you're moving on to trying to do the little flower shapes to let the glue set up a little bit first. And you will be getting glue on your fingers in this section. It's gonna happen. It's just the nature of it. And we do have a bit of a gap in there. That's okay though, because I'm going to come back in and add a second layer in some spots to the clouds, just to give them a little more depth, I guess. So they look a little more alive. I don't know. Not 
quite so flat, which is sort of the reasoning behind um, putting them in the little circles to give them a little bit more movement. But yeah, you might need to add like a couple on top of each other here and there. Just you have to be patient. with it. So I mean this process is a little bit more time consuming, but I just wanted to give the clouds a different different shape, a different feel, a different texture than the sky is, because the sky is just our straight lines. And I felt like, well, you're gonna have trouble understanding that that's supposed to be a different element. Oh. Lost the twist on that one. Or the, the circular shape. And these don't have to be perfect circular shapes. Um, I could just do little tiny balls if I wanted to, but I felt like this gave it more of a, a fluffy motion. I know that seems silly, but it's working for me. Getting the little glue, glue flakes off my fingers. So they'll probably try to unravel until you get them in the glue. And they still might try to unravel once they are in the glue, but that's where them getting a little bit mushy and a little bit more pliable. Oh shit. Pretty sure I just dropped another one into the abyss that is the floor under my desk. <laughs> that one got away. <laughs> Um, yeah, so like as they get mushy from being wet in the glue, you can just kind of squish them back down, push them back into place. Like you're more than allowed to squish them back down if they look like they're popping up. You want to do that before the glue sets completely. Because you're not really going to be able to once the glue sets. Right. 
So we need some, whoop, we need some purple in here, some darker purple. So we'll get some more glue going there. It's probably a section where you don't need a whole ton of glue. I mean, you want enough, but I'm going to put a little bit up on there. I mean, you don't want it too liquidy. Well, let's do it on another couple. Maybe there. Maybe another one there. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna dry the brush there. All right, we do need A little bit of our darker purple. So that's the color that's hanging out next to this one. I've mostly been using the small end on this stylus, but don't be afraid to use the larger end too if you need to, to kind of get these pieces of paper in there. Some sections, depending on if they're bigger spirals or not, might be a little bit more fussy about going in there. And you know what? If that's just how it wants to sit, there's not a whole lot <laughs> you can do about it except put another layer. That's how it's gonna do. Then that's how it's gonna do. And fighting it's not going to help you. You're just going to get mad. So it's just easier to not fight it and be like, okay, that's how you want to sit. It's fine. I'm just putting another couple of lighter purple ones on top here. I'm giving that a chance to set a little bit before we go in with a little bit more glue. And drop a couple more in on top. And 
and sometimes if they're a little bit longer strands they're easier to to twirl but sometimes sometimes that makes them a little bit more fussy so that one just that one wants to be where it wants to be. So we're gonna just kind of dab a little bit more in there. I was originally going to put some in here, but I think we'll just spread out the trees there. I think that might be a little bit too tight of a section to get too fussy over. Alright. Sounds like it's getting dark. I could be wrong about that. But my back's to the window. Uh, it's a little dark. I was gonna say my eyes could be just more used to the lamp that's above me at this point, but yeah, it does feel like it's getting a little prematurely dark. Because it has been staying light till about 7.30, for us at least. That's how you kind of deal with the clouds when they're being a little unruly. Just kind of layer them up a little bit. If you think your spiral's too big, cut the uh, cut the strand. Un unspiral it. Trim this a little bit off of the strand. And. Uh, go from there. But it's kind of okay if the spirals unspiral a little bit. If they're on top of the other clouds, it gives it a little more poof to it, I guess. A little more movement. Like up in here, we're gonna do another layer. Mostly because I'm not 100% happy with that section. I don't like how flat it is. Again, if you like your section flat, then leave it. I don't know. Get down in there. As some of this cloud might get covered up with um, tree color. Again, that's fine. And actually, I kind of want to do these two trees while we're down in here. So, um... I already have the colors pulled aside that we are using for this. Um, where's the color green mat? The oh, that's the grassy green. Um. Although, that would still kind of apply. Okay. Am I using the wrong color? I'm using the wrong color purple. Fuck my life. Alright, um... I'm still using the wrong color purple. Damn it. 
Damn it, Jim. Right, that, that's okay. That's alright. It'll be okay. Alright. Fucking hell. Okay, so we're gonna grab some of our squares for this tree. Now the trees are gonna smush. So. Go ahead and get some of that in there. And I actually, jeez, oh! just over here making a mess. I need my plate because I'm just. Everything's falling. That's fine. Everything's just flying everywhere. It's okay. The chaos of not having a big enough workspace. It's alright. So I'm just kind of spreading this out. Now, <laughs> I'm going to tear a little bit off of our square, and I'm just going to kind of tap it in and slide it around in the glue. We want it to be wrinkly because then that will give it um, a bit more leafy texture in this instance. We'll kind of get the point across of what that is supposed to be. And my rough edges, I'm trying to put to the outer edges. Now, you don't necessarily have to tear it. You could just throw the square in there and see what happens. That's kind of up to you. Now I might be doing a couple of layers. On this just to make sure that we've got all of our spots covered. So yeah, you like you want it to be a little messy. You want the texture. Okay. So actually, let me rinse my brush real quick because I don't want the glue to dry in there before I can get back to it. But we are coming back to it. You stay put. Okay. Alright. 
right, this, this part can be kind of fun. It can be kind of annoying too. Trying to get everything to lay down without ripping. Do have to kind of carefully play with it. And I'm probably going to do probably two layers total. Now I'm okay if there's a flat edge along this roof because you know it's a roof line, the roof line's gonna end up covering it anyhow. You do want to tap it, you want to smush it a little bit, you want to get all of that texture in there because then it looks more tree-like, more like leaves. Alright, now I know we're, I said I'm going to do two layers, I'm going to let that set up just a little bit. Um. And while that's setting up, we're going to do this tree over here. Now this tree is more of a yellowy tree. to get some of our yellow paper out. Alright. Ow. Rip my earbud out. That's good. That's helpful. Completely helpful. that was a motorcycle. I think that was a car. Alright. Um, put the bag of green over there. Alright, let me get this yellow. Bright yellow. <laughs> a very bright yellow. Alright. Let's start to get him smooshed down in there. that all tucked in around our clouds. I mean, I probably should have done the tree before the clouds, but the tree is kind of in front of the clouds. So it's kind of okay if it comes up and overlaps it a little bit. Again, this layer doesn't have to be perfect because we are going to do another layer. Where's my 
right, and then we'll stick on that guy. And then that one in there. And because of this shade is a bit transparent, it's another reason why you may want to do a couple layers on your trees. give those a chance to set up a little bit. So while those are setting up, let's move on up into, where do we wanna go? Where do we wanna go? I guess we'll come up in here. Actually, scratch that. We're gonna come up over into here. And we're going to put our second layer in. Okay, and I actually think my purple, eh, the purple's okay. You knocked the box of tissues off the bed, buddy. It's okay. It was just tissues. This dog looked panicked, like, what was that? What was? So because that didn't have too much of a chance to set up, we might have to do a little extra smooshing action on it. Grab some more of our purple strands and we'll get in there. Okay. This is actually moving along pretty well. We got the pink done today. And that looks pretty good. So you can see the slight difference in the purple shade. I don't think it'll be enough to be too terribly noticeable. I hope. <laughs> that one just like completely unraveled as I was putting it in. Fantastic. I definitely want to pull the spirals as tight as you can. That will help you. Okay, yeah, you can kind of see the difference, but I'm hoping because this is a different layer, it'll be okay. The one further away should be lighter. It should be okay. Alright. I'm 
getting excited here. We are making all sorts of progress. Sorry, I noticed the other one was not quite sitting in a way that I was happy with. Just do a few more on the light purple in that section, and then we'll bring the darker purple back in. So, let's go ahead and get that tapped in. I think after we do this, if I can get the spiral to cooperate. Here we get this purple section moved in. I think our trees will be set up enough to go ahead and do their next layer. That one's going to be a little fussy, so I'm just going to hold that one down for just a moment as I try to get the little glue bits off my other hand. Alright. I actually didn't end up needing the glue plate, so get you back up there. So I'm not sure which shade of purple we're going to keep going with. Since my dumbass did the wrong shade. And then started to twist to the right shade and then used the wrong shade anyway. Um, we might keep going with that slightly darker light color. And I might just second layer that in over top of that. There. Nope, nope, nope. Get in there. So that one just wants to be a bit of an open spiral, and that's okay. As long as he's not like sticking up completely off of the surface. It's alright. We'll work with it. We'll figure it out. We will figure it out. So any place that you see white right now, that's going to be glue. And 
and then the glue will end up drying clear. So that will be all sorts of fun. kind of upset that my package fell into a tracking black hole because they quoted me six to ten days and I was like oh awesome and it should have gotten there this week and that is business days that I counted out it was mailed on the 9th mm -hmm. so I'm a little perturbed <laughs> that it is just missing. Um, considering I paid for priority mail, um, I don't know what to do. I guess we'll wait and see if it shows up within the next two weeks. I don't know if I can... I don't know if the post office can even figure out where the fuck it is. It might just be a shoulder sh shoulder shrug and be like, mm, it'll turn up eventually. I don't know. But I'm not real happy at the moment. We'll see where it was going, their mail delivery dates. Um, have been reduced so either it'll end up finding its way back to me as a return to sender or um, or maybe it'll get to where it's going I hope So we will see what happens if I don't see the person it was going to say anything soon about them receiving it, then I will probably message them and be like, hey, so I was trying to have it be a surprise to show up, but um, <laughs> I sent you a wedding gift and it seems to be missing according to my tracking number. I don't know where it is. Alright, yeah, I do like that additional layer that they've got going on there a bit. So. Uh, your mother is getting dominoes. Did you want something from there or do you want something from Sonic? She's off to the West Coast with something from Sonic. I'm assuming Sonic, but. I think I'd rather have a Sonic. Yeah, that's my question. I'm, I'm kind of dominoes out a little bit. Yeah, after that last experience. So we're going to do the next layer on the tree. I'm just going to get our glue and dropped in there and grab our brush. It's still kind of kind of soggy without that next layer on there so it might be better 
It's gonna wait a little bit longer, but I really want to get my next layer in here. So I guess my mom just couldn't deal with making dinner tonight, I suppose. Yeah, so we're gonna have to be a little bit careful putting in the next layers of color on that. And I can get off of my finger. I do not. No, come on. Let go. Seemed to try to static cling to me a bit there. Alright. Oh, we have a couple little guys here. Let's stick them in there. They're going to be kind of difficult to turn into paper snakes or something else. So we'll get that tapped in there. And once it dries, it will keep this like mushy um, it should keep the ridges that are in there like all of the wrinkles should not go away so and that's what we want. We want all of this lovely texture and motion just to get it a little more believability or get the impression across that this is some kind of tree or bush or plant. It's okay that that came down onto the edge of the roof. The roof line will end up clearing that up. I do want to do another purple section right in there. All right. So unfortunately, I do have this extra piece. Maybe we can try to tap you in this crevice here. Yeah, that works. And it has like all dips in the valleys that a, a tree is going to have. Um, actually, let's get one more piece in here, I think. over here was getting a little unruly. Alright. It's amazing how 
pliable. And um, I don't know, like kind of mushy, but kind of not this paper can be, even with just a little bit of wetness from glue. So yeah, that that's good. I like that. Okay. Let's put pieces of yellow that we didn't end up needing just yet back in to our yellow bag. I have a feeling we're gonna need the yellow bag more um, maybe in here. We might do two different shades of green, I don't know. We'll figure that out. And we'll get it sorted. Okay. So I guess you really don't have to rip a uneven edge on it as you smush it around it'll kind of get there on its own anyhow but yeah you don't want to smush this flat you want the ridges remember ridges are your friend because they will make it seem a little more alive. So again, the one that we're trying to recreate is from season 15, um, from The Joy of Painting, from Bob Ross. And it should be episode 7, uh, Cabin on the Pond, even though it looks a little more barn-like than cabin-like. Okay, so that's going to be good for that one. Okay, so we're all done with that color for right now. We're going to need that color again at some point. So I think we're just going to finish up this cloud and then we'll call it a day today. But we still have a little bit more to go. On this one.
So I don't want to put too much of a double layer um, too close to the edge because then, you know, if it ends up trying to be framed later, that could be a bit problematic. Um, spread out our glue. Okay. Again, clean off the brush, get all the glue out of it. Don't wait to do that. It's okay. You have time for the stuff that's on the canvas. You don't want to let the glue sit in the brush because you might not be able to get it out if you leave it too long because then you might get distracted and just don't end up getting back to it. because this section is a second layer, it's going to be okay if they try to open a little bit. That's not going to be the end of the world. kind of helps with there being another layer underneath because it kind of helps grab. Gives them something to cling to with other ridges. Sorry, I got glue on my fingers. Let's try to get it off of there. Okay. Probably need to pull some more purple out of the bag. Okay. Yes, I'm definitely I'm feeling this. Happy. how this is turning out so far. So I'm just trying to get the upper layer first real quick. Because that's probably the section that's going to dry first. Because it'll be soaking into the paper underneath of it. to tuck that tail down in there. That's 
some little glue peelings from my fingers everywhere. Okay. No, no. I don't unravel that far. I need you to be somewhat raveled. At least. Alright, where's that? Where's the wrong purple? The wrong purple is the purple that we're using now. So the wrong purple is now the right purple, I guess. So I guess I won't be using the other purple that I had started to work on to fix the mistake. That's okay. It'll get used eventually. Probably for the other project that I'm working on because I do need purple in that. There are a multitude of colors involved in that one. It's definitely coming together quite nicely. And this section above the roof will start to make a little more sense once we get the other trees in and all of that jazz. I think I'm going to take out um, the dark purple. I think I'm going to leave in a little line of the light purple. Over in that other section. Okay. Definitely Thank you, loud vehicles. Today has been a very loud vehicle day. Like, they've seemed exceptionally loud. I don't really understand it myself. I can get a few more purple sticks. Sneaks. Well, what do you do for a living? I make paper sneaks. People will be like, what? Paper snakes and paper snail shells. Oh, throwing my tools everywhere. And that's not going to get us anywhere too far. We can have some gaps in some spots. There's gonna be. That's just how it's how it is. Just how it is. Oh, 
of that section I think is going to be um, dark purple Let me try to squeeze these guys in there. Let's actually see a spot that's gonna need a little bit of glue. They got missed. There we go, I'll just fill in that gap a little bit. Alrighty. Ow. Pinched myself. That's brilliant. You're the reason I have short nails. I don't know if you'd be able to do this with longer nails. Um, I don't know. I keep my nails short because I'm always breaking them. Never been a fan of the fake nails. Which is probably a good thing. I don't really have the money to get nails done anyway. They are something that needs to be kept up after. Once you start that. From what I understand. Surely getting there. And I am kind of off camera. Dang it. Pay attention. Forgot we were slid over to the other side. Oh, I love how that looks in the camera. That looks fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. It just looks, ugh. It looks very tree-like. I am very happy with it. I know. Shut up about it. Can't help it. those pieces in there. That one's trying to do its darndest job to unfurl. What's wrong? Oh, nothing. She needed some uh, distilled water. I gave her what was left of mine. Do we need to go grab another one? Uh, not at the moment.
and this kind of in there. Now it looks like a little bit of a mess at the moment, but eventually, when it's all together, and I zoom out. It'll make a little bit more sense. And then again, maybe it won't. Everybody sees things differently. There's really no wrong way to art. Not really. I mean, I've seen people do fantastic things finger painting and quickly. That I find pretty impressive. Push that guy down in there. This one will end up getting. I am um, exporting this uh, VOD to YouTube. I've exported the first two. Uh, so far, I've been trying to export them on Sundays, because then I'm well, um, I'm well after the 24-hour um, Twitch exclusivity clause, so I don't have to worry about that. It's not often that I'm excited with how a project is turning out. I usually always second guessing myself, like, oh, I don't know about this, but this this is looking good. Need a little bit more purple. Probably need a few more purples than that. There might be some sirens infiltrating, so earbud warning. Disclaimer here. I cannot quickly mute my mic. They do sound like they're getting closer, so earbud warning. Sounds like an ambulance. Okay, you're good now. Earbud warning is now over. Alrighty. 
So this will be getting filled out up into here. The lighter purple is going to carry up around the edge. I just wanted to get the trees, or at least start to do the trees, see how they were going to look. And then that little section is finished skywise. Squished in there. Just erasing this glue drying. So we've got a couple more squiggles to go here. Sometimes, um, if you're having a hard time getting the little tails to stick down, or to having a hard time keeping your little spirals from unraveling, like once you first get your once you get your first couple down, if you do your little spiral and then the side where the little end is, um, the little loose end is, either tuck it underneath. Or squish it up against the other ones there because then the other ones that are already down will um, help keep that little tail. Oof. Did you just sit on a kitten? I almost sat on a kitten. The kitten jumped right as I was sitting. She literally wedged herself in there. Oh goodness. Who the hell are you, old bastard? Don't do that in a <laughs> The kitten likes to jump into Russell's computer chair just as he goes to sit down. All right, you guys, that's going to do it for today. Thanks for hanging out. We made some good progress. We got our pink finished being filled in. We got some second layer work done on the clouds. We got two of our trees in so far. This is looking pretty good. I'm fairly happy with it so far. Um, and uh, we've got a long ways to go because we still have the bottom half of the picture to go, but this will be water, this will be just snakes getting filled in, and the grass will be probably um, the paper snakes as well. Might try to do a pattern with it, I don't know, but we still have some bushes to do. The bushes will go pretty quick, I think. Um, depends on what I decide to do with them. Um, I might actually do little paper balls with them instead of... Um, circles since we've got circles up in the clouds but that's where we are today loving how our trees are looking that is fantastic so um remember tomorrow night there saturday night 7 p.m eastern there is no wild challenges podcast this week um leaders in dispose this weekend for her bridal shower uh, i probably i don't anticipate streaming again before wednesday for Bloodthirsty. Um, if I do happen to do another stream this weekend before Wednesday, um, I'll let you know on Twitter, so you might want to follow me over there. It's at NisiBGN on the Twitters. Um, the Wild Challenges podcast will be back next Saturday for another show. And uh, yeah, my next scheduled stream should be Wednesday. It's supposed to be Bloodthirsty. We'll see what the weather's doing. Um, it might end up being Iron Man in place of Bloodthirsty. Um, we might have to do art on Wednesday next week and then do Bloodthirsty and Iron Man Thursday, Friday. We'll see what happens. Um, it really depends on what the weather looks like because I have a strict policy of not really playing um, the challengers that I care about in a thunderstorm. So. 
We will have to see. You guys have a great night. I appreciate your time. Thanks for popping in and checking out the progress. Um, love to the lurkers. And have a good night. Have a good weekend. Take care of yourselves. Don't do anything too silly. And um, I will see you next week, most likely. Until then, have a great one.